Hey folks, welcome to the Wealth Transfer with TC. Today I'm going to be discussing the Iraqi dinar and the former Prime Minister of Iraq, Al Abadi's Twitter statements that he's been making over the last several days. And I want to touch on those because some of these are pretty interesting uh, concerning the Iraqi dinar and its value. Before I get into anything else, I am not a financial advisor. I'm just sharing information, giving you my thoughts and my opinions on the information. And if you guys like these videos that I make, the support links are down below in the description and also the about section of YouTube. Now, folks, I haven't really did very many Iraqi Dinar videos this year. And it's for the simple fact that the videos that I have made uh, show you guys prophetically where we stand with the Iraqi Dinar. And pretty much... You know, we kind of know when it's going to happen. It's going to be when things seem at their worst. And, you know, we've thought that over time, you know, over over the years. You know, there have been certain time periods where things did seem like they got pretty bad. We know that it's things are going to get really, really bad. And we've been talking about some of those things over this past year and a half about how bad things are going to get. And right now with the economy and uh, as far as the United States and uh, the rest of the world, things are go going to get really, really bad. And a lot of people don't even see it yet. And that's why here pretty soon, we are hoping that we are able to start building our storehouse so that we can prepare for when things do seem at their worst. Now, before I go any further, the link to the Iraqi Dinar Prophecy document is down below in the description of this video. All right. And within that document also shows you at least... If you're here with the United States, where you can actually purchase it right now, I'm not buying anymore because I believe that we still have some time before this is going to happen. I do believe that we are going to see movement in the stock market and in the crypto markets that's going to allow you to buy as much as you want. So I've stopped buying Dinar for some time now and will resume that when I see some other actions as far as the crypto and the stock market uh, allow me to just basically you know buy as much as I want now I'm gonna go ahead and get into the former Prime Minister Al Abadi's tweets and if you guys don't know who he is he used to be the former Prime Minister uh, a lot of us looked at him as to being the person that's gonna pull the trigger as far as the Iraqi dinar he was just a Prime Minister between 2014 and 2018 and if you guys remember, in 2014 is when they were supposed to revalue the dinar, okay? And it didn't happen, right? Their country got taken over by uh, two-thirds, right? By that one particular uh, terror group, right? And then he lost the election after that. And so I want you guys to listen. This is his Christmas tweet. And this is kind of interesting to me because, you know, we know what it's like in Iraq. It's a very... Muslim country and this is what he said and this is just the first out of three tweets uh, the first one is just mainly dealing with what he was saying about uh, Christ and he says here on the eve of the birth of Christ the word of God and the spirit of him I extend my warmest congratulations to the Christians of Iraq and the world asking God Almighty to grant security and prosperity to all Iraqis justice coexistence striving for good and responding to offense with benevolence and peace are the foundations of the unity of the society and the cohesion of the state. We must always work for it. Merry Christmas. So I found that tweet to be, you know, really awesome to see that uh, he put that out there. And for him to say what he said about the birth of Christ and the word of God, you know, it really struck me when I saw that. So when I go back and I think about, you know, my journey with the wealth transfer from the Iraqi dinar, it started around 2009, which is the beginning of this journey. And over the years, I've had my own dreams and visions about uh, the Iraqi dinar, and I've heard others in believing that at some point in time that this is going to happen. And over the years, you know, we've been beaten down by the media, even beaten down by people within the dinar community. Because for the longest time, you know, there's a lot of people in the dinar community that call the dinar revaluation all the time. Now, there was a couple time periods, like I said, in 2014, at the end of the Iraq-ISIS war, which was another point where it should have revalued, right? And then we also fought in the middle of 
what was happening with the virus and everything. So there, for me, there was at least three main time periods, but there was a lot of people that was calling it every weekend, every holiday, every budget, um, every election and so forth. And they're still doing it today. But thankfully now that uh, everybody should know where we stand with this. And unfortunately, a lot of people don't. So let's go ahead and go over the next uh, tweet that he put out. This was on December the 26th. And he said here, especially since the oil revenues for the current year, 2022, have exceeded 150 trillion dinars, which is equivalent to the total oil revenues for the three years, 2015, 16, and 17, during the ISIS war. This huge increase in revenues must be in the interest of the citizen and not a burden on him. And he's absolutely right, because it has been a huge burden on the Iraqi people that they're bringing in all this money from oil revenue and the dinar exchange rate is just absolutely horrible and the people are still suffering in that country. So let's go ahead and get to the next tweet which he put out after uh, that one that I just read. What is happening in terms of serious repercussions on the standard of living of citizens due to the low exchange rate of the dinar? And the rise in prices requires quick measures to restore the value of the dinar to what it was. We warned of the consequences of devaluing the dinar two years ago, despite the agreement of the blocks on it. And we are now warning of the consequences of continuing the policy of draining the country's economy. He just said right here that what the issue is, and the issue is the low exchange rate of the dinar. And because you have price increases, it's having a major effect on the Iraqi people. And you would think even by now that they would even, you know, maybe even move it up some, but they haven't even done that yet. And apparently there was an agreement of the blocks on it, dealing with the consequences of devaluing the dinar. They, they knew that there was going to be consequences and they did it. I'm not sure what the exact agreement was. You know, maybe they did agree to raise the value, but it has not happened. And it's allowing even more corruption to take place. So when it comes to Iraqi dinar, and what I expect is that when things get really bad, and I've broken down in video after video after video, you know, where we stand prophetically speaking. And some of it is going to have to do with Israel and their war in the Middle East, and also the stock market itself. Because Kim Clement prophesied some things about when things seem at their worst. And we know now from putting prophetic words from various individuals that the stock market is obviously going to be at a point where it's going to be crashing. And on its way back up is when we're going to see the revaluation take place. And it's going to be provision for the world. right? And we know that a lot of the evil and corruption around the world is going to be taken out uh, before this event occurs. And I think that we, you know, there has been a lot of exposure, but a lot of people still have yet to be removed. And maybe they won't be when this occurs. And I'm not looking for any person to be the president of the United States when this happens. Because I've heard that over and over and over again, that it had to be a particular person, DJT, in office in order for this to happen. It doesn't have to be. Then we also discovered that Iraq was working on a central bank digital currency, right? Central bank digital coin, right? So they will be launching one. I shared a video about how we discovered that they were working on it, but they haven't told anybody yet, right? We found out because of a, uh, of a bank report concerning the banks in the Middle East and how their approach was to CBDCs. And so that's one of the reasons why I think that you're going to see not just the Iraqi dinar, but other currencies uh, fluctuate. I personally saw $1 to $3 to $5 to $3, and other people have seen it higher than that. I think uh, Kevin Drake uh, shared with us uh, some very high prices, and I think that that could be very well because maybe the, maybe the value of the dollar is going to be so low you understand what I mean? Because of the exchange rate. So one dinar could equal, you know, 10 American dollars because the American dollar 
is so low, if you understand what I mean. So in order for that to happen, Iraq has to basically depeg from the dollar, right? There's going to be a financial breakthrough that's going to allow the dinar to change in value. And one of those things is to depeg from the dollar, right? And there's many other things that we've discussed, like hopefully they get out of OPEC, right? Hopefully uh, there's some other financial things that will help and solidify the value of the dinar. But I think one of the things that we all have to be conscious of is that Iraqis have suffered greatly for a very long time. And it's very selfish for a lot of people to be very upset about why the dinar has not changed in value. And there were people that will continue to suffer even now. Some of those people will not be able to see that live in Iraq will not be able to see the benefits that they suffered for. Children have been lost. Parents have been lost. Brothers and sisters have been lost. Families broken and torn apart. So people need to understand that there comes great sacrifice to this wealth transfer concerning the Iraqi dinar. Much different from the wealth transfer when it comes to cryptocurrency or from the stock market. And so even though former Prime Minister Al-Abadi has pointed this out, it's those who are in office uh, currently are the ones that are still keeping this down. And there's going to come a time where it's going to change in value. And it's going to be at a point in time where they have really no choice but to do it. And who knows when this is going to happen as far as relating to this new financial system that the central bank, these central bankers are trying to put into place and Iraq is going to be more than likely from what I see the first country to change in value and it's going to cause everybody else to change in value too as well as far as their currency so folks that is all that I have for today I just wanted to share this information share the uh, tweets that he put out and kind of give a discussion on it since I have not discussed this I do have uh, several more videos coming on this subject one of them I'm waiting on, which gives us another clue as far as about when the dinar is going to revalue. It's going to be coinciding with what Kim Clement said. And then also do a follow-up on some prophecies that were given last year uh, concerning the dinar. So anyways, folks, I thank you guys for listening. God bless. TC out.